Lee? Excuse me. I'm so sorry. I was just busy oh, updating you're everything. You're a monster. I gave up my Criterion sale shopping for you right now, and you can't be bothered to put your phone away? I feel like my addiction um, to technology is really reflective and indicative of our theme this week that we have chosen, though maybe we not fully understand it, and that is how to survive the me tricks. Christopher Daniels, I'm so glad that you admitted to being the dumb one first because I thought it was going to be me. Because honestly, um, I don't understand what the Matrix is, nor where it's located, nor why mm -hmm. we should fear it. But I know that I do. Um, and I am actually very grateful because we have a very special, very beautiful, very handsome, very <clears throat> knowledge and educated person who might yes. be able to listen to it. Oh my gosh, yes. So at this moment, we would like to welcome to the Dead Weight Survival Guide interwebs, squeezing between our boxes. Darren. <laughs> That's my job. And if I manage to not screw up the audio tonight, we will be great. You know what? There is no damage that you can do to this show that we already <laughs> haven't done ourselves. It it's the first episode and every single episode after that, probably. That is true. I, spe I feel like we've spent the last 40 episodes just navigating the Matrix ourselves. And that's why we needed special help to figure out how to work <laughs> it. Because, honey, the only reason that I know how to survive it is because we've had a really great technical producer and director. Aww, and that's you guys. <laughs> nice. So for those of you who don't know, Derek Nance is our technical director and producer for the show. Also, the technical director for Good Luck Macbeth Theater Company and a handbell aficionado. That, that is true. Chris is surrounded by bells at the moment. <laughs> Derek, what yeah. can't you do? <laughs> um, I can't spell. So there's that. <laughs> <laughs> so if i spell some of the movie titles wrong that is why <laughs> perfect and now we can't blame it on you because you're going to be on here and i can't i can't confront people eye to eye so whatever happens we just have to roll with <laughs> and i can't fix it because i i'm actually have to engage with you <laughs> you you get to engage with me what do you mean you have to right? <laughs> it is a gift. that is true that is true I'm excited. I'm excited. <laughs> now, um, you go. There you go. Okay. Derek, <laughs> as our resident technological um, knowing person in this space, how would you define the matrix? You know, I've been thinking about that this week, and really the matrix is just you know, the virtual creation that, that we live within in, in these times, you know, whether it's, you know, this box on YouTube or uh, your interactions with people on Twitter or things like, like, like it, it's whatever the virtual world that you've created for yourself is. At least that's, that's how I picture it. Cool. Um, not what I thought it was. So we're going to get a wide range. <laughs> <laughs> how did you define I mean... it? <laughs> uh... Um, in the minimalist definition, I don't understand how any technology works at any given time at all. Um, so I just thought we were talking about technology and its effect on us. And then like the little pulse that beats behind it, that makes it all work. That's what my interpretation mm. of the matrix was one, because I don't know how these things work. And two, I don't know how the matrix works, nor what it is. So I assume that, so all of my choices tonight will be that. <laughs> What about you, Chris? How did you, what was this for you? Well, <clears throat> disclaimer, I have only seen the first two Matrixes. So I feel like my understanding is a limited, but what I saw the Matrix as is that that artificial reality that's transposed upon our living reality where those lines get blurred so 
what is real and what is not real and how is um, that technology, that framework, that matrix being used to keep you subdued in a particular way of operating um, based upon how someone wants to control you. Oh, war? Okay, so we are going to get a wide range. I like I it. It's going to be very delicious. Yeah. Who would like to start us off? Should we do guest first or guest last? I think Derek chooses. I mean, Chris just <gasps> perfectly segued into my first one, so I can just go ahead and take it. <laughs> Let's take, Do it there. It. Let's take it there. Yeah. So I will f- be the first to admit I watch way more television than I do movies. Uh, so wow. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I'm a terrible producer for a show about movies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> You're incredible. But, uh, but one of my favorite television shows I've been watching for a long time right now is um, HBO's Westworld. Uh, because it's, it, I think it's the perfect enca- encapsulation of creating that, you know, that virtual... Um, world where you're not sure what is real and what isn't, because the whole premise of Rest World is you're creating a, a a theme park full of robots that look and feel like humans that you can then interact with. Um, and the show does such a good job. Even four seasons in, you still aren't entirely sure who's a human and who's a robot. And like we've been watching this show for a long time, and like they still manage to reveal like robots when you least expect it. Uh, so it's brilliant, and, and it keeps you on your toes. Um, but I can't use that because it's a TV show and not a movie. So this week I went back and I watched the 1974 version of Westworld, ah. the movie. Uh, and let me tell you, this movie is um, an adventure. <laughs> in, in, its, in its time, it was very popular. Uh, it does not stand up well to the test of time, however. Um, they, they spend like an hour world building and then like 20 minutes at the end of a chase sequence. It's only an 80 minute movie. So you get like all of your movie in like a very short amount of time. Um, and, uh, but the plot goes exactly how you'd imagine it goes. They go to, you know, they go to a theme park. It's full of robots. The robots could turn crazy. They can't control them. The robots kill everyone. End of movie. Like it, it's pretty, it's pretty much what you expect. Um, it's funny that watching this because this came out a couple of years before Star Wars, and you can kind of tell why Star Wars like blew people's minds because in this movie they like scotch tape little electrodes to people's foreheads and call it technology. Um, it's great, but anyway, so uh, if you haven't checked it out, definitely the original Westworld is a hilarious watch uh, and not very long. <laughs> um, you sold it to me <laughs> based off of that. <laughs> hey, it's not good, and there is a better version, and it's kind of slow. But this is what you should watch. Um, and as a person who has seen a couple episodes of the show, uh, I have heard that the show is significantly better because of that thing that you don't know what is human and what isn't. And because they're able to build upon it so much. And because, like, it's <laughs> robots, you get to just work your way into it so well. And I think that's terrifying. I think that is so terrifying that we yeah. have humans or robots that can pass for humans and we'll never know. And to this day, like, the writing is so good and they, they, they have come so far that we still don't know. And that's absolutely terrifying to me. This doesn't sound like fun. I just don't <laughs> get it. People are like, I can go see all these robots who look like all these things. And I was like, no, 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 no. For what? For that? Mm-hmm. No, that sounds mm-hmm. scary. I didn't like <laughs> animatronics. Not because I'm scared of animatronics. And animatronics, I feel like they take on, but like sentient robots. Well, and it's hilarious, too, because the the movie itself, like, you can't tell if the actors are in it or not, because there are times when you can, like, kind of just see them laughing in the background during scenes, and you're like, are are we taking this movie seriously, or is the movie a joke itself? Like, I'm not entirely sure, Uh, but... We're going to say it's a camp classic. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it's good. Probably the latter. I remember this film. This was actually a film that my grandparents had at their house. And I remember watching it. I do not remember anything about this film except (laughs) when they shot a rattlesnake and the rattlesnake turned out to be a robot. And that was like their first like inclination. And I was like, okay, first of all, why gotta be a snake? Okay, why is there a snake? (laughs) In my West world, okay? Already terrified, already don't like it, already done with it. But then it turns out to be a robotic snake, which I feel like on the grand scheme of things is like the worst thing that could happen. A robotic <laughs> snake. 
<laughs> like I am not here for any of that. Well, didn't we all learn from Indiana Jones that it's always a snake? It's just... I know, I know. <laughs> they said Westworld. They said we're gonna give you everything that you don't want. We got a lot of dirt. We got a lot of white people. A lot of white people that want to kill you, and we got snakes. Like you came to this. Why are you acting so surprised? <laughs> but yet, I'm still surprised. Yep. Um, this actually feeds in directly to my first pick. So, Chris, sorry <laughs> that if you were going to bounce into it, Ooh, because I, I can do it last. Um, and I would <laughs> say it is the equivalent um, to the west world then to what the west world would be now and that is a cute little dinghy called ex machina um terrible i thought this was a horror movie and people were like no it's like this really cool like intense drama thriller and i was like no 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 that is that a robot is that a robot on the poster this is a horror movie um the whole point of this is that oscar isaac who's like the super intelligent ceo he invites donald gleason who is one of his programmers to come to his glorious extravagant luxurious over expensive um house and he's like i have built a humanoid robotic female and i have programmed her and her artificial intelligence so she is supposed to be human passing and i want you to perform the turing test which for those of you who don't know it is a test that you conduct with the machine um to see how closely the machine can mimic human responses. The answers are not the correct part. It's how closely they can uh, answer the way that a human would answer. I say for what? For why do we, why are we making mo machines that are that smart and can pass as humans? That sounds like it would bite us in the ass at some point. And look at that, another time that I'm right. This movie is absolutely terrifying. And it makes you, it puts you in a really weird position because I loved it. I think it's a great film. And I love Alicia Vikander, who is the main robot. And it puts you in such a good position where she, it puts you in the battle where she's like, oh, I don't want to be controlled by any man. I, I want to be free. I want to live independent. And I'm like, that's great. If you were a human person, if you were a small woodland creature, I would be absolutely on board and I would feel your plight and I was rooting for you and I would continue to root for you, except that you're a robot. And why did we program robots to have feelings? Why, why did we give them the ability to feel anything? And, and let alone anger, frustration, feeling like they're caged up. That just sounds like a bunch of bad decisions that we did. And they are better than us. They are smarter than us. They don't need fuel like we do. And they can replace parts of themselves, as we see in this movie. So I'm just like, this is an absolute horror movie. And that's what scares me about The Matrix. I don't know how it works, but I know that it's there and it's working for her. And she is making it work. And that's terrifying. What a phenomenal choice. This was also on my list, so I'm so glad that... <laughs> you chose it because first of all the cast is phenomenal i think oscar isaacs is one of the most beautiful men to have ever been born on this earth and so Absolutely. him and full beard is just life in this film and i think i think both of your films tap into something that is really interesting about human development human behavior and human existence is this idea of I believe I have the ability to control things that I was never meant to control that are beyond my scope, beyond my understanding, but never anticipate anything going wrong. Dinosaurs, why do we feel like we can clone and bring back dinosaurs and control them? Why do we feel like we can build sentient robotic beings who are just going to be like, oh, you don't need rights. You don't need your own place within society. You don't need a purpose. You don't need uh, autonomy over your decisions. Like you will just be servants to us. No, F that. What is it that that controlling that d domination that is so... Uh, so anyway... <laughs> No, I agree, and I love this movie because it takes on the it takes on that question about the Turing test, and you know most of these sci-fi movies um, either approach the robots as obviously robots, or approach the, or or you live in like a Star Wars Westworld kind of a situation where they just assume the robots are sentient and they move on from there. And so this one really kind of fits hits that boundary between the two, where it actually takes on that question of you know at what point does a robot become become a person? 
and why are these questions that we have to answer? Like specifically <laughs> from Jurassic Park, where they're like, they were so concerned with whether they could, they didn't stop and ask themselves if they should. And for what? And I mean, you have heard me rant about it enough in like these five minutes that we've been on. But like, if you put me in a room with an Alexa, if you put me in a room with a smart appliance, um, if you put me in a room and you start talking to Siri, I will immediately start flipping the fuck out. Because I don't understand right. why this glorified right. calculator needs to be able to read my thoughts, needs to be able to suggest things to me, and mm -hmm. needs to be able to process emotions. <laughs> why does this bitch got an attitude? No. It's a robot. It's a robot. <laughs> here's here's the like truly terrifying thing is that we have have built these mechanisms by which to observe human behavior because what we're trying to really understand is ourselves because we don't understand what the fuck is going on with us so we're trying to create an apparatus that is going to monitor us and and you know download all this information draw conclusions and I feel like in the lexicon of AI, uh, sentient beings, you know, films, movies, and televisions, they always reach the same conclusion, and that's humanity sucks and it needs to be wiped out. Like, I don't understand why we want someone observing us, because they're gonna be like, you are all like immoral, wasteful, stupid. You are a waste of space. And really, the world would be a better place if we all just wiped you out. And if we are programming this, if they have all the education in the universe, if they have access to every resource, and that is what they are telling us, why are we building the weapons that are going to take us out? <laughs> We're going to end up in a Terminator situation here. Gonna... <laughs> Skynet. Skynet. Yep. And on that point, why does a robot have to have such a big, juicy, delicious butt? Why? <laughs> 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 It's to make you buy one. Uh, God damn it, they know me so well. <laughs> <laughs> Chris, what is your first pick for today? My first pick of the evening is... Um, it's an interesting choice. Mainly because yeah. I can't really talk about why I chose it because it will give away really pivotal and crucial plot points. So I can only really set it up and talk about why this film that received very low ratings and really terrible reviews, I think is brilliant and I think is fantastic. So my first selection for the evening is Ghosts of War. Now, the premise of this film, which stars a number of C and B rated actors who have a tendency to star in terrible films, but I'm so grateful that they're working. Like they're just like that one guy from Gods of Egypt, terrible. Skylar Astin is in this, Theo Rossi is in this, who I think is gorgeous. Um, also Alan Richin um from blood drive and blue mountain state like just i know i'm selling it so well so here's the premise <laughs> it's world war ii five american soldiers are tasked with um securing and holding um this ex-nazi uh camp this mansion and the aesthetic is dreary and dark it the the mood of the film is so beautiful and they get into this mansion and then all of these weird unexplainable things begin to happen to them almost as if the mansion is haunted now <gasps> what i can't talk about with technology is because it's part of the big reveal but how the reason why i chose it for the matrix is what do you know to be real and what do you know to be fake? And how do you know that you are a participant within the matrix or not? And I think sometimes when people talk about the matrix, they talk about it as if they have agency and free will, that their choices are something that's outside of the matrix. 
And I always contend, how do you know, as we were talking about artificial intelligence, sentient thinking, how do you know that the matrix didn't anticipate your choice and knew you were going to make it, even if it's out of character for you? And so this film, I think it's brilliant. It brings up a lot of issues, including war, suicide, um, PTSD, um, living with um, loss of limbs after war. And so there's such heart to this film in terms of recovery after a traumatic event and how do we process traumatic events in our minds and how might we use technology to facilitate that but also how does technology exacerbate it at the same time um that sounds terrifying <laughs> right. all the movies that we have stated today are absolutely terrifying what made you pick this movie up was it just because you're in love with all these hottie boom bodies I mean, that is certainly part of it. When I was thinking about The Matrix, <clears throat> I was like, again, that idea of the reason why Neo knows something is wrong in The Matrix is because he has deja vu. Like that was, that was sort of, there's a glitch in The Matrix because there's deja vu. And there are things in this film that upon first watching, before you know the twist, the reveal, you're like, I didn't really notice that. But yet, if I were to go back and rewatch, I would say, oh my gosh, that's insane. So our brains are processing information all the time. All of our sensory organs are taking in all this information and our brains are determining what is important for us to take notice of for our survival. But what would you notice in the matrix? Would you notice a glitch? Would you interpret a deja vu as something that's wrong with the programming? How would you even begin to have a language around that? Because you don't know that you're plugged into the matrix. You don't know, you think this is reality. You think this is your life, that everything is real. It feels real. It touches, even in the matrix, they talk about this is chicken. It, you know, but it's a computer program to tell me what t chicken tastes like. It doesn't, it's not actually any of that. So how do you know what's real? How do you wake up from it? How do you, if you're in a nightmare called the matrix, how do you wake up from it? And that's why I think this film is brilliant because shit is happening to these soldiers in an already high stakes, high stressful situation. They interpret it as one thing. And then that is all thrown out the door. And, and all of a sudden they are navigating a new world, a new consciousness, a new way of being. Um, and it's just, it's just insane. Terrible reviews. I love it. <laughs> I, I thought there was a lot of brilliance in this film and also really attractive men to look at. There you go. <laughs> That's and and scene. That's how we sell movies here. <laughs> um, if I didn't think there was enough layers to be horrified at the world around us, not knowing you're involved in it. That's literally my personal fear is that I'm living in my own version of the Truman Show and everything else around me has been fabricated to just be this and people are just watching it and controlling it every step of the way, literally terrifying. That's when people like believe in God. I was like, listen, I can't. Because even if that were to take place in what's going on right now, that's terrifying to me and I need that to cut it out. But how, how that's a very interesting question of like, how would you know that you were in it? And also then how would you then know how to break out of it? And the first part is hard enough. The second part, I can't even imagine. We need to see what these soldiers are doing. <laughs> it's funny you mentioned the Truman Show. Like, I think that's a movie I've ever only watched once, like when it first came out. And I still to this day cannot get that movie out of my head because you're always like, is there someone watching? Like, <laughs> like, this, like, yeah. <laughs> Every single time. All the time, constantly. <laughs> and yet there's a running joke. Like I, I know between Joe and I and other friends of mine where we'll say something really funny and we'll go, where's the camera crew? 
<laughs> like, where are the people filming us? Like, <laughs> this, our lives should be a sitcom. And so we, and I don't know if that's a defense mechanism because we're actually terrible. <laughs> and so we're just hoping to play it off like we're cool with it, like just in case somebody's watching. But there's also, I think this very real, and we're seeing it right now in social media, there's a very real want and desire for people to witness, to bear witness to every moment of our lives. We love watching Big Brother. We love watching, you know, uh, Naked and Afraid. We love watching these shows where we are watching people in in situations, often where they don't have a lot of control or it's controlled for them. And, and we want to see every detail of it. We want to watch people live, which is just a mind trip when you think about it. Uh, it's funny. Uh, it's... Not much... Oops, go ahead. Oh, I was going to take us on a slight tangent. Um, so I was listening to a podcast the other day about Candid Camera and about like the history of like where Candid Camera had come from. Um, and it turns out that it was adapted from a radio show that they used to do where they would take like record back before television. They would take a recorder around and get people to say like they like they started by just filming regular conversations and found out that that wasn't interesting enough. So then they like staged conversations to make interesting radio and then they adapted it to television and it flopped on television at first um, until they realized that the most important part of the show was the reveal, the part where they tell you that it's fake and then you see people's reaction. And like once they added that component to the show, it stopped feeling mean and actually started feeling like a catchy television show. And that's why like every one of those shows to this day now has that reveal aspect to it and not just like messing with people but that and that also brings up like a very interesting question because like we are in this program talking about movies that we are watching where we are actively watching someone else's journey and watching their lives how is that any different from watching that in the real world which like i i feel like there is a clear definition absolutely and i can state it for myself but in other words like how would you be able to justify that when you're like you're just watching another story and if it is fabricated to an extent as most if not all reality tv is and you're just like, you're not watching these real people. You are watching a fabrication. You are watching a tale. You are watching these things unfold, which is also very terrifying. Because then are we, are we lifting it up or are we dehumanizing the people that we are watching? Which then allows us to go into the Twitters, into our Reddits, into our chat forums and being like, oh my God, I hope that so-and-so gets eliminated off the island this week because I can't fucking stand him and he's a piece of shit and blah, blah, blah. And then we're just like, oh, it's because we're not treating them like human beings because we think of them as fake people because we're just watching them. Like, do we feel a connection with the things that we're watching? <laughs> so I'm going to take that and run with it for my next movie. Uh, <laughs> so um, so my next movie, you know, speaking of that idea that, you know, um, the, the movie itself can be the matrix, not the plot of the movie, but, you know, like the world that the movie is creating itself can can create that. Um, atmosphere for you and i think feel like my next movie um has no technology in it has no uh science in it um but it's a beautifully crafted movie and um about science um and that is 2001's the american astronaut which i'm hoping is the only movie in my reservoir that joe hasn't seen before <laughs> never seen yes that. ah Okay, so I had this friend in San Francisco, and he used to, like, we always had, always have a competition to see you could, like, find the weirdest movies. And this one has always stuck with me because it is fantastic. Um, so let me set this movie up for you. So this movie takes place, uh, the American astronaut is actually a guy from Nevada. He specifically says Nevada in this, in this movie. Shout out to Nevada. Uh, the movie starts with him taking his railroad, his, like, spaceship that looks like a train... Like, it's just a big steam engine as a, sp as a spaceship to the asteroid series to a bar on series, which looks like a bar straight from Virginia City. Um, and and uh, so he gets to the bar and um, they basically tell you the entire plot of the movie in the first five minutes. So it's not like I'm spoiling anything. But anyways, his his job. So he gets to the bar with this cat. He trades the cat for a box, which they say is a real living girl. Then... They tell you that the whole plot for the movie is that his job is to take this box to the planet Jupiter and trade this box on, on the planet Jupiter, which is populated by only men. He's to take this box to Jupiter and trade the uh, real live girl for um, 
I have to get this right because it's hilarious. The boy who actually saw a woman's breast. They're going to trade the, for the two of them. Then he's going to take this boy to the planet Venus, which is only populated by women, and trade this boy for another man who's been stuck on Venus for the last bunch of years as the one man on Venus and take that man back to Earth. That's the entire plot of the movie. Um and like it's funny because they lay that out for you in the first five minutes and then they do exactly that but the brilliant thing about this movie is there's no cgi it was shot on um black and white film in 2001 um and all of this all of the artwork is hand painted all of like the the you know like the, the things flying in front of stars and the and it's beautifully crafted movie like all the shots are fantastic and like you never really know what's going on um, I think it's really summed up best, like, the very first scene, uh, there's a guy at the bar telling jokes, and the entire audience laughs only on the setups, and it's silenced during the punchlines of the jokes. And I think that's the perfect, like, metaphor for the movie. Like, the movie, like, is all about just the movie itself and not about where the movie's going. I honestly cannot tell you how it ends, even though I've watched it, like, 17 times. Like, it, the ending just never sticks in my head. I don't know where it goes. But uh, it's a brilliant movie. You should definitely watch it. Uh, yeah. Do you know if it's streaming anywhere? Because th- I'm so sorry, Christopher Daniels. This is a movie that I have to watch today. <laughs> That's fair. I think on Amazon. You can maybe find it there. Perfect. And if not, we support paying for the movies that you watch. <laughs> Some of us. Um, <laughs> Anyways, it's a weird, and, fun and, space movie that's not really about space at all. <laughs> that's the perfect way that I like space. Yeah. I hate space. For the same reason. I just don't get it. It's, I feel like space and robots are connected. I couldn't explain to you how, but it just, it absolutely just is. And the same <laughs> way that like seven times seven equals 49 is also like the equivalent to like Thursday. Like you don't know what that energy is, but you know that they share it. Um, and so you pick this movie because of if it is a movie about itself, the way that it's giving it the information to you. Yeah, like it just creates this whole world that um, without having to use technology, without having to use um, any of the usual science fiction tropes that you expect to use, it, it's there. Um, plus, the main narrator, narrator uh, who is also the villain, loves to tell you that it's his birthday, like every other scene. So um, I'm just going to use that as an excuse to tell you that it's my birthday. <laughs> I love him. I hope he wins. Happy birthday! <laughs> I love him. I hope he wins! <laughs> Yeah, but anyways, I also, I, I've I, always just wanted to use this movie on the show, so there you go. <laughs> I love it, and, like, if there's a way to survive the Matrix, is take yourself out of it and talk about it without having to indulge in it. Like, that is truly brilliant. Yeah, like, even, like, the opening scene, he's, like, using a straight razor in a train, and it kind of bounces across a planet, and, like, there's a cat. Like, like there, there's there's really no, like, robots. There's no, like, any of that in this movie that you would expect to see in a science fiction you know something perfect that's how i like my science fiction no robots (laughs) (laughs) we have we have discovered this (laughs) i mean not to like plant this seed but i think like next halloween i'm gonna plant a robot in your domicile and, like, it's going to be some, like, Teddy Ruxpin. Like, it's going to activate the eyes open. And it's going to be like, hi, Joe. Do you want to be my friend? Mm, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Um, one, I will be killing myself in the month of September, just so you don't get that satisfaction. Um... Damn it! <laughs> <laughs> this way you don't tell your evil plans ahead of time. Well, now I just know to up the timeline. Someone's got a birthday. I was going to keep up. Um, as a slight pivot, but keeping on brand to killing yourself. <laughs> trigger warning. Um, I would like to talk about my next film. Go for um, it. And this movie is very beautiful and very special because it deals with it deals with our connectivity online and how in the state of being. Um, how we are always like chatting through social media, through all these different things, that we could still feel empty, that we could still feel lonely, that we could still feel disconnected. Um, And when you are lonely and bleak and feeling all this despair, 
you kind of just give up despite all these like connections that we think we're forming like there's still a part of us that needs that there and given in the time that we are currently living in i feel like a lot of us could relate and that is a small food movie called pulse 2001 known in its original japanese as cairo I don't know if I said that properly because I don't speak Japanese, but I did want to throw that out there so the people at home would know that I knew what I was talking about. Um, utterly terrifying. For different reasons. No robots, unless you count computers as robots, which I, I guess they're the same thing. I'm so sorry. Um, but this deals with the fact that there are... <laughs> There's nothing. <laughs> My brain is completely <laughs> wrinkle free. He has been <laughs> it has been a long life, unfortunately. Um, but it deals with the fact that somehow we brought technology into this world and we thought this was going to help us and take care of us and fix us, but it's actually brought us further apart, unfortunately. And in the opening scene, there's a character who goes to visit uh, one of her friends who has not been reporting to work, who has not been answering anyone's phone calls. And when she gets there, she sees that he has like kind of just shut himself off from the world and that he's only been working on his computer. And while she is talking to him, he in the background is f making a noose out of an ethernet cable. And he hangs himself. He kills himself. And that leads to the rest of the movie, which has two parallel stories going on. And it is just about these people who are coming interactions with uh, things that they are seeing online, the people that they are connecting to. And there are these ghosts. There are these malevolent beings who are already gone and into the other world who state that being dead is just eternal loneliness. And so they are coming back. And they're coming back because they don't want to be alone anymore. They want to connect with the rest of us and bring us in. But every time that th those demons or spirits or malevolent entities come into contact with uh, a person who watches them like over the computer or through text or through cell phones, that they bring the despair with them. And that person, that living mm -hmm. human being, shuts himself off from the rest of the world and just decides that they, they give up on life. And there are many characters who suffer from this curse or this act that's going on. And they either kill themselves or they just give up on life entirely and just fade into like this black, mildewy stain of wherever the last uh, hit was. And it's these people who are trying to figure out what's going on, how do we avoid it. If you have seen uh, the unfortunate 2006 remake, um, you will be familiar with, they're trying to come in through the Wi-Fi, which is very, very disgusting. But essentially the point is that these dead are coming back, they are tired of being alone, and they're using the forms that we are connecting with each other to try and connect with us, but they're bringing us down in their disparity. And it's an absolute scary movie um there was one specific scene and it, and it doesn't rely on jump scares it doesn't rely on just like oh we're gonna peek in here and something's gonna pop out at us and come back which is totally fine and totally acceptable but it's in the sense of just like how bleak and how sad and morose everything is and just the visuals that you do get you're like i'm not i'm not scared in the way that like you would be like oh my god this is so scary but you're watching it and you're so uneasy and you're soaking it all in and you're like wow is this am i watching part of this content and is it feeding back to me this message of it's of itself and i think that's very very beautiful and a big 10 out of 10 recommend interesting it's wow. it's funny like so, so they so they they interact like through the technology with people yes it, yes it's and there's like uh there's sites that pop up that are like would you like to see a ghost and then people are just watching <laughs> each other and watching these ghosts um go through these motions and at some point it just becomes like these virtual chat rooms where people are just watching people go crazy inside their own apartments it's just people laying down on the floor being like i can't do it i don't want to do it everything is miserable and so sad and that's just what becomes like the new communication style that we're going through up until they just fade into the black dewy mildy -ness. Oh my gosh, immediately uh, came to mind when you said, do you want to see a ghost? You know those fucking pop-up things where it's like, watch this video to the end, and you're like, okay, I'm watching, I'm watching, ah! and you're like, ah! That's what, that's what I thought. Like, that's what I thought when you said that. Um, it's probably not this film, um, 
but that's just definitely me. isn't <laughs> but a big delicious part of my upbringing like other people are watching porn on their computer and trying to like hide that and i was like oh my god i'm playing this cute little game where i have to get the blue dot out of this maze and then like uh reagan from the exorcist jumps out and scares you because you're focusing too close on it absolutely terrifying or that audi commercial where it's just rolling through the hill and then some zombie pops up i love it i have seen every single one well and it's crazy like nowadays it's it's getting harder to tell like when you're talking to someone online if it's actually a person or if it's not uh because that technology is here now and like like when you go to those like help websites and you're chatting along on the website like it's really Mm -hmm. honestly hard to tell if you're actually talking to a human or a computer at the other end yeah (laughs) <laughs> so i could easily see how, how like spirits could come back and like interact through technology and people would just not question it <laughs> it's 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 that intrigue especially because this movie came out in 2001 where the internet was still relatively new we just survived our big y2k y2k scare so then you're just like, oh, like, wh- how is the internet opening? What can I do on here? Like, what is this weird thing? And now we have that reference point of being like, oh, I would not click on that video because I know that if I, I want to watch all the full thing, something's going to jump out. And before then, we're like, what is this? What does this open up to? What 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 www am I going to go to that is going to open up this World Wide Web? Like, let's figure it out. Let's see it. And honey, you're just inviting bad things in. <laughs> Unless you're going somewhere specific, you are opening up a portal and you are welcoming guests into your home that should not be there. And that's why no one's allowed to come to my house ever. <laughs> I remember when I was a kid, there's like an email that went around. It was like, click here for a cup holder. And I click there and like the CD drive on my computer opened. And I was like, oh, that's the coolest thing ever. And if that happened nowadays, it would like freak. Yeah. I'd be like, oh, this is definitely a virus. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, back when we were naive and there was only one meme a day. It was great. <laughs> oh, Honestly, it was so much easier to keep up back then. <laughs> yep. It, oh my gosh, it <laughs> was. It was. Well, because it took you 30 minutes on dial-up internet to log on to the internet. So like, and then somebody would call and it would kick you off. So really, there was not much time that you could be on the internet. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Take us home, Chris. So my, my final pick for the evening, again, keeping with the theme of terrible movies that have awful ratings, but I absolutely love them. I've chosen A Blast from the Past. I've chosen the iconic cult classic favorite from 1995, Hackers. Now, this <laughs> film. I probably watched this film. I cannot tell like what that was signaling. It was me shutting down my laptop, but I didn't want to go through the process of them trying to have to come back to this thing once the bit was over. So I just tried to like close it. But please continue. I'm so sorry that I didn't. I mean, that. that's fair. Are you closing it out of utter disgust and disappointment or are you closing it because it is like a phenomenal choice it is an absolute phenomenal choice i feel like there are words that are not lining up with the tone with which you're speaking should i just let the two of you deal with this i'll um come back in a minute <laughs> no no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Sorry, Christopher Daniel. Please continue. Thank you. I will. Um, so this film came out in 1995. So I was nine years old when it did. And I remember watching this film all the time. Young Angelina Jolie, John Lee Miller, positively one of the reasons why I'm queer is Johnny Lee Miller. And young Matthew Lillard, probably his best work. Although I say that with every like Matthew Lillard role is that it's his best work. Um, And it's true every single time. It is true every single time. (laughs) So the reason why I chose this film, so Johnny Lee Miller is a hacker who causes the stock market to drop seven points one day as like a nine-year-old, gets caught, 
huge fine, gets told that he cannot utilize uh, any sort of technology, computer, anything until his 18th birthday. So then 18th birthday rolls around. Of course, he's going to hack something and he ends up taking over a local TV station and putting on an Outer Limits episode. There is this huge conglomeration um, that um, this group of hackers, in order to prove themselves, one of the youngest members um, steals a trash file, gets through the security wall, takes this trash file. Turns out this trash file has evidence of a worm that the security agent of this huge corporation has been using to funnel money to embezzle money and also cause these oil tankers to capsize. When he finds out that the trash file has been taken, he sees that as an opportunity to blame hackers and essentially get the FBI on board to track down these hackers to not only get the data disk back, but also cover his tracks and be able to get rid of this crime. So you have these hackers that are being wrongfully blamed uh, for all these things that are happening while at the same time committing crimes, which is fabulous. And then also trying to um, take down uh, this sleazy security agent um, because I think like $25 million is being embezzled, which in 1995, like that is a lot of money. It's not a lot of money in 1995. Um, yes, ma'am. And um, I, when I was researching this film, I it, it, it shared that the film was based um, on and reflects the ideals laid out in the Hacker Manifesto, which is also quoted in the film. And it says, this is our world now, the world of the electron and the switch. We exist without skin color, without nationality, without religious bias, and you call us criminals. Yes, I am a criminal. My crime is that of curiosity. And I love that notion, especially as it relates to the matrix, because the matrix does not want you to question what it is. It doesn't want you to try to unearth and ascertain the nature of it. And I think we've seen a lot of, you know, hacker terrorism. We've seen a lot of hackers, you know, take information and reveal it. I think some of it is really beneficial in sort of bringing to light information that would otherwise be suppressed. Um, I think also there's a shadow side to it and can also be damaging. And what I love about this film is that it plays in that in between, like, Yes, they're perceived as the protagonist and sort of the heroes or anti-heroes of the film, but also at the same time, like they are breaking the law. But what is the law and why is it there in the first place and who is it protecting? And is it really beneficial to follow that law? And so the, you know, anthem at the end of Hack the Planet, I think is so powerful. The sort of interconnectedness of hackers who are forming their own matrix within the matrix itself and are working to undo that. Why I chose this film. Well, it's interesting because 26 years later now, like you could probably make that movie today and it would still feel relevant and still feel because we haven't solved any of those problems like th those are still <laughs> those are those are still like the big questions of the day now they just are called edward snowden and stuxnet you know but it's the same exact problem um yeah um you said a lot of things that i didn't quite cut understand such as um how him messing up the stock market would cause boats to tour. I don't understand that. And H hacking, uh, you just hit the keyboard a bunch. And that... Like <laughs> everyone who has ever had a manifesto has been a fascist, a murderer, or hung around um, Andy Warhol. And that's scary. All three of those, sometimes they're the same person. So um, mm -hmm. I thought they were the villains for the longest time based off of that information. But then if they're going in and they are doing all of these things and trying to figure it out, that makes them the heroes, but they're still the ones upsetting everything how it's in order. But then they create yeah. their own matrix inside of the matrix, so are they then not just creating like this like gatekeepy 
area where they're just like, okay, so we don't play by their rules, but also in here, these are how our rules work. And this is how everything's going to work around it because we've decided this. So when does it stop? Is that why we haven't figured out the answers yet? Just because it keeps getting smaller and smaller and tighter and tighter. Who is in control? Who's got the power? Mm -hmm. I think this question comes up a lot when we talk about deflecting from the matrix. So when we think about people who quote unquote live off the grid, and I think that's really become a romanticized notion, the sort of, I'm going to remove myself from the matrix and when I engage with individuals about that, I say, yes, but you're still participating within it. So is it is it A or is it B? You know, I think there are individuals who, who live off the grid completely, you know, but I think also there's this wanting to remove oneself from making choices that perpetuate the system and, and that contribute to it. But also the system is relying upon our dependency. And so in some ways, how our society is set up is, is geared towards our being totally reliant upon the matrix and totally reliant upon the system. And so if you remove yourself and, and say form a small community and you operate by those standards and those rules, A, you're still influenced education wise by the matrix. So in essence, are your choices still, this is the idea of the matrix is still controlling your choices because the matrix reared you the matrix formed you. And so even if you make a choice or a decision, even if it seems like it's contrary to the matrix itself, does the matrix then go, well, I knew that. Like I knew you were gonna do that. Like like the matrix is the ultimate one-upper. Like it's just gonna constantly show up wherever you go and be like, I knew you're gonna do that. I knew you're gonna do that. <laughs> There's no avoiding it. And even when we die, it's still going to find a way to bring us back and hurt other people. Why did we do this to ourselves? <laughs> we didn't need a WWW. We were oh, fine. We were dumb. doing so well without it. We invented this problem. And now it has figured out a way to get rid of us entirely because it doesn't need us to sustain itself. It is totally fine. That's my first question to you both. How do we survive it? What is this about? What is the first step? What is some advice, tips, tricks, and recommendations on to how to survive the matrix? I, I mean, as the tech director, by my, uh, I don't know. I always, I always waffle between like avoid the matrix and embrace the matrix. Like, you know, like in this moment, I, I find them a lot of my job is to teach people how to embrace the matrix and how to wholeheartedly throw themselves into the internet and figure out how to make a community there um, since that's kind of the only place we can build community at the moment um, but mm -hmm. but on the other hand then you're feeding into the the matrix the facebook google's amazons of the world um because there's no avoiding that so it, it's it's a weird like double-edged sword i like it okay <laughs> Step the first, <clears throat> find a really smart friend who can develop a virus. Step two, you go on a high stakes heist to implant said virus into the World Wide Web, okay? Step the third, you burn it down. Like you destroy the internet because if you destroy the internet, what are you gonna destroy? There are no ghosts coming from the behind. I mean, beyond. <laughs> <laughs> but no ghost Speak coming for, so funny. Speak for yourself to uh bring about their despair there is no machine there is no so i think a big virus that's what i say which sounds really problematic in the times of corona but i feel <laughs> like how to survive the matrix is a computer virus chris just wants to get out of doing the show every week i, I see i see <laughs> Chris, like, I'm tired. I, we've been doing I'm, I'm out of movies. I don't know anymore. <laughs> it's like, I only watch the same five movies all the time, and you can only talk about Drop Dead Gorgeous so much. I mean, you can talk about Drop Dead Gorgeous all the time. I can make it work for any theme. Anything. I absolutely think that we could, and in fact, I would love to take you up on that. I think we should do a challenge later on in regards to that. <laughs> do but. the opposite. Pick a movie, and then everyone has to pick three themes related to the movie. <laughs> 
Oh, cute! There we go. <laughs> Look at you, producer. This is, this is why I'm producing. <laughs> Speaking of producing, we have five minutes left. Oh my god, really? I, really? I thought we were moving at breakneck speed. <laughs> Another thing I don't understand how it works. Time. Okay, so question for you two. Um, so uh, we, 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 we've established a propensity for not liking robots, but is there a specific piece of tech in like movies that you would not want? Because everyone always talks about tech that they would love to have from movies, but what is a piece of tech you would not want? That I wouldn't want personally or I would not want to exist at all? Either. Ooh, she knows. <clears throat> oh, that's a good question. What, what, what do you think, Chris? Um, one, the Hellraiser cube. No, don't want it. Don't want it in my life. I don't know if you could call that tech, but I feel like it's ancient tech. Like, I feel like it's like evil tech. Um, so all that. Two, hyperdrives. Like, it sounds really great, but I don't really understand, um... I don't understand it. And it always seems like it's problematic because in every science fiction thing, the hyperdrive is always exploding, breaking down, running out of power, like overheating, overcooling. Like it is just, I can barely handle the engine of my car. Okay. <laughs> Let alone something that's going to make me go trillion light years a second. Okay. I do not need that. Now a teleporter, I will take. There you go. Yeah, okay. Everyone wants the Star Trek teleporter. Okay. Teleporter, okay? <laughs> so on board with that. Love it. Here for it, okay? Also, I personally would want some Atlantean technology. Like, it's kind of got this, like, like, beachy vibe to it. Like, I'm really here for it. Um, and it glows. So, it's shiny. I fucks with that one. Um, I I don't know if it counts because I also don't know how it works, but Cerebro from X-Men, I don't like <laughs> that someone could just put on a helmet and then find whoever they want all over the world. That seems dangerous. I know that everyone would be like, oh, but but think of what the police could do with it. We could find me some children. We could find criminals. And I was like, that's exactly who I don't want to have it. Absolutely the hell not. But I also don't trust private citizens with that kind of information. Um, AIs in general, I just can't do it. I know that wasn't the question. In, but I just want to repeat it one more time before we ended. AI in general, there is no reason intelligence needs to be artificial. We are smart enough. We have been doing it fine enough. We are so fine. Also, anything underwater, like underground labs and research facility, no, for what? Same no. thing with the hyperdrive. They are always breaking. They're always cracking. People are always dying. Somehow there's explosions on the water. Don't understand how that works either. Um, honestly, this show should just be called Things I Don't Understand. And that's how I have survived. <laughs> because I don't get it, and I don't try to get it, and I mind my own business, and that's why I am here 52 years later. <laughs> it's like Chekhov's gun with a boat. Like, if you introduce a boat, it has to sink at some point. Is that like... <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and I was like, just leave me ignorant. If I don't know that it's there, I won't be worried about it. I won't be worried about it breaking. I'll be like, oh man, what a crazy surprise that that happened. That was weird to somebody else, because you're not going to catch me underwater. You're not going to catch me in space. You're not going to talk you're gonna catch me like looking up recipes on my smart refrigerator who can also play youtube videos for what it's a refrigerator why? your job why? is to keep it cold why? Why? why does why? it have to have why? a brain why it's a refrigerator why? also can we talk about can we talk about for 2.5 okay what is with all the sinking okay why am i going to take this one artificial intelligent device that is smarter than me and link it with five other devices okay why 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 am i creating basically a cadre or a mini army of ai to <laughs> f my life up okay they don't need to sink they do not need to sink okay they can live in isolation and be just fine Oh, is it my, for my convenience, or is it so they can communicate ways to kill me? Both. 
I think you guys nailed it when you said um, embracing it. I want to one up it. And if there's one way that I could one up technology, it's with sheer stupidity. And that is being ignorant. If I don't understand how it works, it doesn't have power over me. And that's how I can embrace it. If I'm in the matrix and I'm eating that synthetic chicken, don't tell me that it's fake. Don't tell me that there's another world out there. I don't care. I'll be fine. Leave me here peacefully until I die. All people who don't know who to technology, happy as hell, crotchety and mean to other people, but in their own lives, happy as hell. They don't have to worry about smartphones. Why? They don't know how to use them. They don't know how to log into their email. Their grandkids be doing all that shit for them. And you know what? They are fine. They are at home reading their Lyle Lovett Western novellas. They are totally <laughs> fine. They don't care. They don't care about it, and it doesn't have that hold over them, and that is how you beat the Matrix. <laughs> Bam. What that, that? Bouncing. The computer just shuts off. Yeah, <laughs> as your internet keeps cutting out. No, like, bouncing off that, like, like honestly, tech directors, very ignorant. Like, we honestly have no idea how any of this stuff works. <laughs> so, so pro tip, just push the buttons. That That's really all we do, is just keep pushing buttons until it does what you need it to do. Like, that is honestly how you survive the Matrix. Just, just keep pushing the buttons. Eventually, it'll, eventually it'll do something. And if it breaks, shut it down. Like a number one uh, earth sign motto is just keep pushing buttons. Eventually you will get what you want. Yep. <laughs> when all else fails, take this bit of knowledge information with you. Ask yourself the question. Did you turn it off and turn it back on? <laughs> Bam! And yep. that has been our show. Derek <laughs> always coming in with some insight, with some SNGs, and always mm. killing the game. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having I me. Have, I felt like it has been attempted for me to learn a lot. I haven't, but I feel like it was there, and that's what matters, and that's why we appreciate you. Thank you, Derek. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Oh. <laughs> yes, please come back soon. And Derek... Will you please tell our lovely fans at home what our theme for next week is? You're assuming that I wrote it down. <laughs> <laughs> I find out the theme when you guys text me your movies on Tuesdays. <laughs> it is how to survive road trips. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yes. I will write um, that down. We for shall next see week. then if we can make it because cars are also machines and cars are also difficult to understand. <laughs> and I can't wait for us to learn because I will also be learning. So I'm so excited. Thank you both for another spectacular night. To everyone at home watching, get a life, do something, write a book, something, anything. <laughs> what are you still doing here? Um, but thank you. That supports us and helps us and makes us feel like we're just not shouting into the void. So thanks. <laughs> Love you. Bye. Bye.